Okay, so for this next part of the question, what I've done is I've added to the sketch that we originally have been given, and I've now put this point T in. We're told that the ball travels to this point T, which is 20 meters horizontally from A and 0.75 meters above the ground. And what we've got to do is find the size then of the angle alpha here. And what I've done is I've taken the equation that we had to show in the first part of this question, u squared equal 2g over sine squared alpha. Now, I'm not going to be able to work out the angle alpha just from this equation, purely because I don't know u at this stage. So how do we progress with this question? Well, I'm going to look at the vertical motion and I'm going to look at the horizontal motion and I will find that through these three equations, this one here and the equation I derived for the vertical motion and horizontal motion, I have simultaneous equations that I should be able to solve for angle alpha. So first of all, what I'm going to do is look at the vertical motion. And you'll notice I've taken upwards as positive. So taking upwards as positive, purely because we start to project in an upward direction, seems sensible to do that. I'm going to take my variables, my SUVAT variables, let's just list them down, S, U, V, A and T. And we know S, S remember is displacement. You've got to be very careful here though because the displacement from A to T is a negative displacement. You can see it's gone from 2 meters down to 0.75 meters above the ground. So that's a drop of minus 1.25 meters. Now I'm going to write that as minus 5 over 4. I find it's easier to work with fractions than it is with decimals. But again, that's up to you whether you want to go for that. Now, u, the initial upward component of the velocity. Well, that's going to be u sine alpha. Remember, it doesn't contain the angle alpha, so it's sine when you're looking at resolving in that direction. So that's u sine alpha. As for the final velocity, that's the final vertical velocity at t. We don't know what it is at this stage, so I'll just leave that blank. Now the acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity. Remember, that acts downwards throughout the problem. Okay, that's g. All right. So because it acts downwards throughout the problem, that's going to be minus g. Okay, and the time t, well, we don't know the time it takes to get to the point t. So I'll just call it t here. Now, the equation that I'm going to use links together these variables, but it's introduced t into this problem. And so I'm just going to use s equals ut plus a half a t squared. And if I use that equation, what we therefore get is S, the displacement, which I'm going to write as minus 5 over 4, rather than minus 1.25, equals the initial vertical velocity, U sine alpha, okay, put that in brackets, times the time T. And then we've got plus a half times minus G here, T squared. So that's going to be negative overall, so it's going to be minus a half g t squared. Okay, so what you see now is that I've got t introduced into the equations. I've got u, alpha and t, three unknowns. And so I need a third equation to work with this. I've got this one up here, which I'll call number one, okay? And I've got this new one down here, which I'll call number two. So I need a third equation, hopefully with t, alpha uh, and u in, okay? And I should then be able to solve them. 
Okay, so let me just draw a line down through here and we'll consider now the horizontal motion. Now with the horizontal motion, we should know that the acceleration, I'll just put it in here, since the acceleration, we should know the acceleration A is zero. The particle moves in the horizontal sense with constant velocity. There is no acceleration. And with that, if I was to list out my SUVAT variables, what I would have is just simply S equals UT. If I was using the formula down here, S equals UT plus a half AT squared, A is zero, so this just goes out. So you get this formula, okay? So if we put in our values into this, it follows that S is the 20, U, the horizontal component of the initial speed here, will be U cosine alpha, because it contains the angle. U cosine alpha, I'll put that in brackets, and we multiply that with the time T that it takes to go from here to here to T here, right? Now, I'm going to need to work with simultaneous equations and t is the thing that I'm going to make the subject, okay, because it's going to be substituted into this equation here. So from this equation I can therefore see that t is equal to 20 divided by all of u cos alpha. Okay. I'm going to call that equation three. We're going to be substituting that into here, okay, in a moment. I also, also notice we've got t squared there. I'm going to develop that further, okay. From here, I'm going to square t here, t squared, and if I square the right-hand side here, we're clearly going to have 400, okay, for 20 squared, over u squared cos squared, alpha. But I can now pick up on the u squared part here from equation 1, knowing that it's 2g over sine squared alpha. I'll just write a note in here that that's using equation 1. All right? So that's going to mean that I'm going to now have t squared equals the 400, and it's divided by u squared, which is going to be the 2g, and it, that's going to be over sine squared alpha. But I can take the sine squared alpha, it's the same as putting it up on the top. Okay, if I multiply top and bottom by sine squared alpha, I would end up with 400 sine squared alpha here, and then I'd have that cos squared alpha down there. Okay. So it would be 2g over sine squared alpha there, but by multiplying top and bottom of the fraction by sine squared alpha, it becomes 400 sine squared alpha over the 2g, and then multiply by that cos squared alpha in the denominator. Okay, so I hope you got that stage there. Now, the reason for doing that is that I can see that the 2 will cancel into the 400, that will give me 200, and sine squared alpha over cos squared alpha, that's going to be tan squared alpha. Should be familiar with that identity. Sine over cosine is a tan. And that's all divided by the g. Okay? So I'm going to call this equation 4. Right? Bit of a squeeze, but um, I want to keep all of this on the one screen. Okay? Now, what I'm going to do is substitute equation 3 and equation 4 into equation 2. Let's just write a note on that, and that is to substitute, we'll put sub for short, sub equation 3 and 4, okay, in equation 2. And by doing that, I'm going to have minus 5 upon 4, so we have minus 5 over 4, and that's going to be equal to 
u sine alpha, so u sine alpha times t. And we've seen from 3 that t is 20 over u cos alpha. I'll slide that u cos alpha underneath here. Okay? And then we've got minus a half gt squared. So that's minus a half g times t squared. And we've seen that t squared is now 200 times tan squared alpha over g. Now here I can do a lot of cancelling. I can see that these two g's, for instance, cancel one another out. I can divide the 2 into the 200, giving me 100. And down here, these two u's cancel one another out. And I can see that also that sine alpha over cosine alpha, well, that's tan alpha. I'll leave it for the moment, OK, because um, I haven't got much room here. But remember that that is tan alpha. So I've got one equation with tan alpha in. In fact, this is a quadratic equation in tan alpha. So I'm going to need to rearrange this and make it equal to zero. But I don't like this fraction here. So what I'm going to do is divide, first of all, throughout by 5. So if I divide throughout by 5, that goes into there once. I've got minus 1 here now. 5 into 20 goes 4. And 5 into the 100 goes 20 times. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this all in one step, OK, is I'm going to multiply through by 4. And I'm going to rearrange this so that I end up with a quadratic in tan alpha where this term becomes positive. So if I multiply through by 4, this term is now going to be 20 times 4, which is going to be 80 tan squared alpha. But it's going to be negative, so I'm going to add that to both sides and I'm going to then have 80 tan squared alpha. OK? Now, for this term here, multiplying this by 4 is just going to give me 16, 4 fours being 16. Remember, this is tan alpha. I'm going to then subtract it from both sides, so I'm going to get minus 16 tan alpha there. OK? And then multiplying this term, which is minus a quarter, by 4 just leaves me with minus 1. And that will equal 0. OK, so quite a lot of work going on there, just purely so I can fit this all in on the one screen. OK, now we need to factorise this or you could use the quadratic formula. It's up to you. But this does factorise very nicely. We can have 20 tan alpha. OK, in one bracket and in the other bracket, it has to be 4 tan alpha so that we got the 20 times 4, giving me the 80 there. And then in the end of each bracket, it's got to be a plus 1 and a minus 1. Plus 1 going here and a minus 1 going there. So you end up with minus 20 alpha, plus 4 tan alpha, giving you the minus 16 tan alpha, and plus 1 times minus 1, giving you the minus 1 there. And that equals 0. And in the usual way, each of these factors should equal 0. So if 20 tan alpha plus 1 equals 0, rearranging that gives you tan alpha equals minus 1 20th. And if you take the next one, the other factor, 4 tan alpha minus 1 equaling 0, tan alpha must equal 1 quarter. OK? Right. Well, if you were to take the inverse tan of minus 1 20th, you'd end up with a negative angle. And alpha can't be a negative angle. OK, so there's no solution for that particular one. No solution that's appropriate for this question anyway. OK, but when it comes to tan alpha equaling a quarter, if you were to take the inverse tan of a quarter on your calculator, Assuming you're working in degrees mode, you'll find that you get 14.03 and so on. 
and I'm going to round that up to say one decimal place and that will be 14.0 degrees to one decimal place, one dp. In the mark scheme, they're quite happy to accept 14 degrees, okay? Or as they say, better still, you could do one decimal place, two decimal places, but essentially it's going to be approximately 14 degrees. Okay, so quite long-winded. That's why it was worth so many marks. I hope you've been able to follow that if it caused problems. Sorry it's a bit cramped, but I did want to keep it all on the one screen for you.